introduction. Um, my name is Justice Daze. Uh, I'll be taking you through the first unit in my class, which is measure of central tendency. The measure of central tendency can also be known as measure of location. When we talk about measure of location and measure of central tendency, they are the same. Now, these measures can also be called averages. They describe the center of a distribution. They provide a single value which are used to summarize a set of observations or data. For example, Now, we have five observations on the board. Two, four, six, seven, and eight as scores of students in a class. Now, we can use a single value to summarize the whole distribution if we should look for the mean of a class. So, if we want to find the mean, what we have to do is to add the following observation 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7 and 8. When you add these five observations together, then you divide it by the number of observations, which is 5. That will give you the mean. And when we do that, we'll be getting 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 all over 5 all over 5 because the observation the number of observation is 5 so 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 7 is 19 plus 8 is 27 then you divide 27 out of 5 now you realize that you get a peculiar number and that peculiar number will be used to summarize the whole data, which is 2, 4, 6, 7, and 8. Now, let's look at the, the three main measures of this central thing that we'll be talking about. Or let's look at the three averages we have. We'll be talking about the mean. We'll be talking about the mean. Median and move. These are the three averages we have. Mean, median, and move. Now, knowing these three averages or these measures, let's look at the reasons why we need to use these averages in educational statistics. Now, these averages are used as a single score to summarize the data. Now let us assume in a class of 500 students, a single score of value such as the mean can be computed and the mean will be used to describe the performance of the class. Now, the averages can also help us to know the level of performance by comparing with a given standard of performance. For example, if I have the mean of the class to be 10, then it means that if Kofi should have a score of 15, we can end up saying that Kofi has performed above the mean. That is the level of performance we are talking about. We are comparing Kofi's score, which is 15, to the class mean, which is 10, then we can end up saying that Kofi has performed above the mean. In another hand, we can also say that uh, if an individual in the class, let's say Koju, has a score of 8 and the class mean is 10, we can end up saying that Koju with a score of 8 has performed below the mean. Now the mean becomes a standard here. And the standard was derived from the norm, which is the class. Now, we can also use this average to look at or give, uh, the average gives us the direction of students' performance. That is to say, we'll be comparing the mean 
will compare the median and the mean to determine the direction of performance. So when we have the mean greater than the median, we can say that the performance of the class is skewed to the right, which is indicating that there is a low performance. In the lab, we can also say that whenever the median is less than the mean, it also depicts the same phenomena, which is uh, the direction of the class is um, skewed to the right, which depicts a low performance. And then we can say whenever the median is greater than the mean, that can also give us a direction. And this direction will be moving to the left, which depicts that the performance of the class is good. Now, our focus for today's class will be on, on group data. We're not going to look at the group data for today. We'll look at our group data. So let's talk about the mean, the mood, and the median. Let's start with the mean. Let's start with the mean. Now, there are basically there are three types of mean. These are arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic mean. But for the purpose of the class, we'll be interested in the arithmetic mean and we'll be interested in the on group data. Now, when we say on group data, they are data which in the we take the form of a raw state. So for instance, when I ask of the ages of students in the class and I write them, it depicts an on group data. So this is what we'll be interested in. Now in calculating for an on group data, for the mean, in calculating for the mean, we are saying that the total, the summation of the observation, when you add all the scores, so let's assume we are giving the scores of students in the test. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So we are asked to find the mean of the test, or the mean for the test. We can end up saying that one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. Now, all this, you need to count the number of observations. So how many are they? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you divide all over what? Six. Now, one plus two is three. Plus three is six. Plus four is ten. Plus five is fifteen. Plus six is twenty-one. So you have a total of twenty-one out of six. Are we good? So you realize that when you compute that, you get a figure, and the figure you get will stand in for the mean. Now, let's quickly go to the features, the features or properties of the mean. So the properties of the mean, let's look at the properties of the mean. Now, the first properties of the mean as the mean is influenced by every score or value that makes it up. Now, from the example we made earlier, you see we added all the available scores. It is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, all over 6. That gives us the mean for the class. So we are saying that whenever we are dealing with the mean, the mean is influenced by all the scores available um, that makes the day, um, that, that, that makes up the distribution. Now the second property is the mean is very sensitive to extreme scores. For example, if I have these following scores: two, two, four, six, eight, ten. Now let's calculate for the mean. When you calculate for the mean of this score. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10. We said that the first property is that the mean is, um, it uses all the available values or scores. That makes up the distribution. So we need to add all the scores here and divide it by the number of observations, which is what? 5. 2 plus 4 is 6. Plus 6 is 12. 
plus x is 20 plus x is 30. So you'll be getting 30 out of 5. When you do the calculation, you'll be getting 6. So the mean for the class is 6. Now, if I should change the score 10 to 20, 10 to 20, so let us do we have a new distribution 2, 4, 6, 8. Now, this 10 is changed to 20. Let's look at the effect of the mean because we are saying that the mean is very sensitive to extreme scores. Now, let's calculate for the mean now. Now, we have to get 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 and plus 20. All out of what? 5. Now, when you do the calculation, you're getting 2 plus 4, which is 6, plus 6, which is 12, plus 8, which is 10, plus 20, which is 40. So you're getting 40 for the, for the total number of solutions. All out of what? 5. When you do the calculation, you're getting 8. So you realize that the new mean will be equal to what? 8. Now let's look at the difference. Initially, when the figure was 10, the score was 10, we had a mean of 6. Now we have increased this score by 10 to make it 20. Now as a result of that increase, it has also affected the mean by the mean increasing to what? From 6 to 8. This tells us that the mean is sensitive to extreme scores or outliers. Another property is, if the mean is subtracted from each individual score and the difference are summed up, the result is zero. So this talks about the mean deviation. So in this case, if we get the mean of the class, okay, now let's assume this is the mean. Let's see the first example. This is the mean. Now, let's subtract the mean from the individual score. The first score was what? 2. So 2 minus 6. The second score was 4. 4 minus 6. The third score was 6. So 6 minus 6. The, third, the fourth score was 8. 8 minus 6. And the last score was 10. 10 is 0. 8 minus 6 will give you 2. And 10 minus 6 will give you 4. When you do the calculation, you realize that 4 plus 2 is 6. Plus 0 is 6. Plus negative 2 is negative 4. Plus negative 4 is. And the difference is being summed up. You, get, you should get 7. And that's the, uh, the calculation we have done. Now, if the second, the fifth property is if the same value is added or subtracted from every number in a set of score, the mean goes up or goes down by that value. For example, if we have the following source, now at first when we calculated for the mean for this scores, we have the mean to be what six. Now let us assume that the, if the same value is added or subtracted, so let's take a constant four. Now I'm going to add four to all the scores. Okay, so now this score will be six. So 4 plus 4 will give you 8. 8 plus 4 will give you 10. 8, 6 plus 4 will give you 10. 8 plus 4 will give you 12. And 10 plus 4 will give you 14. So these are the new scores. Now, to find the mean, we are saying that whenever it happens this way, okay, we don't, you don't need to calculate because it's a constant that is added across board. So the old mean plus the constant will give you the new mean. But let me prove it right. Now, 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 4 and plus 14. Let's see. 6 plus 8 will give you 6 plus 8 will give you 14 plus 10 will give you 24 plus 12 will give you 36 Plus 14 will give you 50. Now, 50 is the total all over 5. Now, you realize that you get 10. Have you seen? Now, 
the constant k or the constant was what? 4. Initially, I said we don't need to calculate because the constant was 4. So what we have, what we should have done then was to add the constant to the old mean. So you see, if you calculate, you end up getting the mean to be what? To be 10. Now, the old mean was 6 plus the constant is 4. So when you add, you still get 10. So there is no need to calculate whenever you have the same number going through or added to every individual score or subtracted from every individual score. Just what you have to do is just add the constant to the old mean or you subtract the constant from the old mean. Now, let's look at the next property. If each score is multiplied or divided by the same value, the mean increase or decrease by the same value. So what it means here again is that there is a constant here to k. Let us the k here is 2. Let's go back to our old observations. Okay? So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. Now, our old mean and multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the given score by 2. So when we do that, this 2 is the constant. Now, this score will no longer be 2, it will now be 4. But don't forget the mean for this observation was 6 in our previous calculation. In our previous calculation was 6. So now this score will be 4, this score will be 8, this score will be 12, this will be 16, and this will be 20. Because we are multiplying these scores by a constant 2. Therefore, we are saying that there is no need for you to calculate. What you have to do is that go for the old mean. So this is the old mean. The old mean is equal to 6. And what is the constant? It is 2. What did you do? You multiply the 2 by every individual score. So you multiply the 6 by 2, which is giving you 12. So our new mean will be 12. Are we good? So now let's look at the users. The users of the mean. Now, it is useful when the actual magnitude of the scores is needed to get an average. Example, total sale of a new product. Selecting a student to represent a whole class in a competition. It is appropriate to use the mean. It is also useful for further statistical analysis or work when we believe that the distribution is normal. It is useful when the scores are symmetrically distributed or when it is normally distributed. Now, let's look at the median, which is the second average we will talk about. Remember, we said that there are three averages, the mean, the median, and the the mode. Now the median. The median is it is the score such that approximately one half of the scores are above it and one half of the scores are below it. It means that with the median, we divide the score into two equal parts. Okay. So let's look at some of the features or properties of the median. Now, the median it is not influenced by extreme scores. Why? Why? Because we do not use all the scores available in the distribution. We are only interested in finding that middle number. It does not use all the scores in the distribution. Now, the median it is used for further statistical work, but its use is limited. We will come to that when we get to the direct shape of the performance. You realize that the median can be used for further statistical analysis, yes, but the use of the median is limited. Now, when we believe that the distribution is normal, sorry, when we believe that the distribution is skewed, the appropriate measure to use there is the mean when we are talking about measure of central tendency or measure of location. Shape. Now let's go to the mode. Let's go to the mode. But before I go to the mode, put this in mind that um, 
one of the limitation of the median is that um, it can be used for further statistical analysis, but its use is limited. And another one is it does not use all the values that makes up that and that makes up the distribution. Now let's talk about the last average, which is the mode. The mode is just finding the most occurring number within a set of observation. Dealing with mode, such circumstances you could you can have only one number occurring most within a set of observation. We call that the unimodal. Sometimes there can be two numbers occurring most at the same rate. Okay, they are occurring both. We call that one by modal. Sometimes it can be three, it can be four, it can be five. If you should look at it, it will go as long as using all the French numbers to represent the mode. So we say that anytime it's above three, okay, we prefer to call it multi modal. That is when four, three or more numbers, uh, four or more numbers appear most at the same rate, then we can call it multi modal. Now, one of the weakness about the mode is that it cannot be used for federal statistical analysis. Now, let's talk about the direction of performance. I said that the median can be used for federal statistical analysis, but its use is limited. And I said that the mean is used for federal statistical analysis. So, Looking at the direction of the performance, there are two types of distribution we talk about under the direction. Okay? We can have what we refer to as normal distribution and we can have what we refer to as skewed distribution. When we talk about skewed distribution, it can either be to the left or to the right. That is either negatively skewed or positively skewed. Are we okay? So, when we talk about normal distribution, Normal distribution. Now, under normal distribution, we believe that whenever we refer to a distribution being normal, we say our mode is equal to our median, which is equal to our mean. So, whenever we say a distribution is normal, it means that our mode is equal to our median, which is equal to our mean. Then we can say that the distribution is normal. Whenever we want to refer to the other, which is the skewed distribution, so bear in mind, the mode, median, and mean are the same when we talk about normal distribution. Skewed distribution. With skewed distribution, I said we have two way, two types of skewed distribution. It can be positively skewed or negatively negatively skewed. Okay. Now let's look at when a distribution is positively skewed. When we say a distribution is positively skewed, it means that the distribution, the direction is moving towards to our right. As we can see, it means that the direction of the curve is going towards the right. Now, whenever it means that the direction of the curve is it, it's going to the right. So here we are saying that our mean is greater than our median. And this thing I use the median here as a comparison to determine the direction of performance. The reason is that the median can be used for further statistical work, but its use is limited. So this is the further statistical work that the median can do. But apart from this, the median cannot be used for any further statistical analysis anymore.
So there is a median and a mean to, that, to determine the direction of students' performance. Now, what this means is that it is positively skewed. It is positively skewed because our mean is greater than our median. And whenever a distribution is positively skewed in education, that is, we say that uh, the performance of the student is low, or the performance of the class is low. It's low because the majority of the students are getting low scores than high scores. It means when you take a class of 200, for instance, the uh, majority of the class are having low scores as compared to those who are having high scores. So you see that the distribution is positively skewed, meaning that performance is low. Now, let's talk about a negatively skewed distribution. A negatively skewed distribution. And you realize that this distribution is moving towards our left. Okay. Moving towards our left tells us that the distribution is skewed to our left, which means that there is a negatively skewed distribution. Telling us that median is greater than our mean. Okay. Now whenever the median is greater than our mean. It tells us that performance of the student is good, is high. Okay. Now, when performance of the student is high, it means that majority of the students are getting more high scores than low scores. Are we good? Then that is what the negatively skewed distribution is depicting. Is that okay? So, if you get a question, let's say um, in a class where the mean, the mean is equal to 70 and the median is equal to 90 okay the median is equal to 90 the median is equal to 90 this tells us that median is greater than our mean okay what's the meaning of that it means that the performance of the students are is good if it is good then it is the direction is moving to our left. Tell that it is negatively skewed, indicating the good performance. This is where we will end today's lecture. Thank you so much. Welcome to CJTV. Kindly subscribe. You'll be giving updates wherever goes on in CJTV. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.